Stay right there in your easy chair For 30 minutes of pleasure Don't you go, it's more than the show It's the talk of the desert It's the talk of the desert with Belinda Reed I just love coming home at night I turn around, she's a treasure Now, here's Melinda. I have the cutest couple with me today on Talk of the Desert. He is an arranger, a conductor, a musician, plays the piano, sings, and his beautiful wife is a fantastic singer. And according to the bio, he's been called a singer, singer, and a musician's musician. And I'd like to welcome Buddy Greco and his beautiful wife, Leslie, Leslie Anders. I'll get it out, I'll spit it out. <laughs> How are you two? We're wonderful. We're great. Good. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Well, thank you for coming. Thanks. Welcome to Talk of the Desert. Thank Welcome you. to thank the you. Desert, I should right. say, because you base out of Las Vegas. Correct. Right. That's right. Yeah. But, Buddy, you were in town for the Sinatra Golf event recently. The oh, yeah. Celebrity, Sinatra Celebrity Golf Invitational, isn't that what it's called? I've played every year, I think, for the past um, 10, 12 years. Uh, and it's a joy to come back here all the time. I love coming back here. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great. But, um, Betty, you've also produced about uh, over 60 albums. I know that. I just came out, uh, which one are we talking about before we went on air? I just came out with my 65th album. And, uh, Yay. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, it, it's, it's a joy now, you know, when you reach my age now and all the years that I've been in it. Uh, I love doing it. I love producing. I just, we're finishing something with Leslie uh, right now, which she'll tell you about, I guess. And uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's true. Well, yeah. I always do kind of a biographical background. Right. So I have to ask you, buddy, where were you born and where'd you grow up? <laughs> well, I'm originally. Have you grown up yet? Well, no. I don't want to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be the way I am. Uh, I'm originally from Philadelphia, and uh, I started playing piano when I was four. My father was a music critic. My mother was a musician. Uh, my brothers were musicians, and uh, all my life I wanted to be a classical piano player because I loved classical music, and I still do. And, but when I was about 13 or 14, I heard people like Art Tatum and Teddy Wilson and these great Earl Garner, these great piano players. And I knew then I wanted to be a, a jazz piano player. Made my first record at 16, sold a million and a half copies, and I made 33 bucks. That was it. <laughs> that was it. Now, wait a second. Let's go back just a second here. I understand from your bio that you were on the radio at a very, very young oh, yeah. age. Yeah. My father had a sort of an Italian uh, uh, show on, on the radio station. Philadelphia WPEN and we gave shows we gave an operetta as an Italian and so and so did my brother and so on so that's really how I started it was a uh, WPEN WPEN Philadelphia is Philadelphia my... right yes and uh, that's really my background so but you, uh, you were on the radio for a number of years long time a long time yes I'm a radio man <laughs> <laughs> yes, lower the voice. Lower the That's voice, right. right. That's right. Well, now, how did this come about that you got to record a record at the age of 16? Well, I was playing in a club uh, in Philadelphia called the Club 13, which is my lucky number, by the way. And uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Wexler, Elliot Wexler, God rest his soul, he was managing Benny Goodman at the time. And Benny was going to start a new band. And this is 19, I think, 49 or 50. And I had a big hit record, Ain't She Pretty? It's a big hit. And uh, Elliot convinced me that uh, nobody knows really how long those records are going to last. He, I, I really wanted to learn my craft as a piano player. And he convinced me to give that up after maybe eight or nine months and join Benny Goodman, which I did for a couple of years. And then I just went on TV from then. And, uh, and here I am after all these years. Yes, but there's a, there's a lot of there's things. A lot. You don't have time. I don't oh, think. Well, well, we have about, uh, let's see, 20 minutes left. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more than that, actually. Um, but, Betty, how did, okay, 16, you, you do this album. Did you go into a studio to do it? What? Well, you won't believe this. My first record was on a wire recorder. I know what a wire recorder a is. A wire recorder. And then we really got a hot, and we went to tape. We had two channels, and my goodness, I mean, I thought, I, you know, wow, we got two <laughs> stereo, you know. Then we went to four, and now here we are after all these years, we've got you know, a million channels. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I, I made my first record at 16. And you said you sold a million and a half? Sold a million and a half copies, and the label had uh, people like myself, Mel Torme, uh, uh, Duke Ellington, Sarah Vaughn. It was a very, very good label. 
but unfortunately, uh, they took more than they sold, you know, oh. and somebody went south with a lot of money. Mm. And it was really a shame because I, my background, I come from very poor parents, you know, and uh, I was going to buy a home for my mom and dad. And I figured, well, maybe I had about $30,000 coming. And I received the one and only check for 33 bucks. And that's the first time they took me away. That's, yeah, but, yeah, that it was is really amazing. Yeah. But, it, but it got the attention of Benny Goodman. Then I went with Benny. Well, yeah, obviously, if you sell a million and a half uh, records, you're, you're going, going to get, get attention, attention of somebody, right? Yeah, exactly. So tell us, how did you meet Benny Goodman? Uh, my manager, uh, Mr. Wexer, at that time was managing Benny, uh, who was starting a new band. He, he kind of retired for a while. But the only unfortunate part was 1949-50 and so on, Bebop was very heavy at the time, the music, and, and I and I love jazz, of course. And uh, it was really quite funny because half of the show that we did was Benny Goodman doing all the old tunes, Why Don't You Do Right, and String of Pearls and everything. And then when he used to leave, I took over the band because the drums had BG, and I used to say to Benny, <laughs> BG means Benny Greco, it doesn't mean <laughs> Benny Goodman. <laughs> You. Right. <laughs> yeah. So he used to leave, and then we did all the really hot jazz bebop things. That only lasted a couple of years. Yeah, to work with Benny Goodman, I think that's going to be exciting. Well, I really learned my craft. I mm -hmm. mean, he was uh, he was a giant. And the people that I met with him, and the first time I did uh, Carnegie Hall, and the first time we did a show for, for the Queen of England, I mean, I traveled all over the world with Benny, and it was a, quite an experience. Well, I think doing a command performance for the Queen of England and performing at Carnegie Hall have to be two of your highlights of Absolutely. your career. Absolutely. Yes. It is. What, what is it? Did you have to go through some formality for the command performance for the Queen? Or what uh, was? Not really. All of that was taken care of before we, we came over there. But mm -hmm. the thing is, after the uh, reception is over, you stand in line with all the other stars. And by the way, there were many, many stars on that show. And uh, you, you talk and you, you know, you kind of bow and so on. But the funny thing about it is that years later, uh, I did a command performance in 1964 with four guys who had yet to come to America. <laughs> and because uh, Ladies of Tramp was a very big hit worldwide. And uh, <laughs> I'm, give, I'm probably giving it away. And a magazine followed me for a couple of days. They were doing a story on me. And they said, Mr. Greco, what do you think of these? Four guys, uh, and I said very smugly, "Well, if I know my music, they'll be around for my, maybe a year." You know who it was? The Beatles. <laughs> so I did it again. <laughs> oh, I think we've all done things like that, haven't we, buddy? <laughs> um, when did you take off on your own? Uh, I probably started, I think, in 1955 when I when I finally got myself together and I I knew what path that I wanted to go as a, as a singer, a piano player. And uh, it probably 1955. And I, as again, I've been doing it ever since. I was <laughs> yeah. a very young boy at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say, you're in diapers, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have had a magnificent career performing really literally all yeah, over the world. Great. I've been very lucky. Yeah. Well, you know, it's peaks and valleys, as you know, what this business is. Right. You're hot, you're not hot. But what's happening now is that uh, things are turning around. My kind of music is hot again, and, and I'm probably the last of the performers, like the Sinatras and Sammy and so on. In fact, my new CD, which I'm sending you, thank you, uh, uh, is with uh, Frank and Sammy and I, so I'm very, very proud of that. Well, and we've got a story to tell, but we've got to bring your beautiful wife Please in here. I do. Feel, I feel like I'm leaving her no. out. It's terrible. <laughs> no, all right. Le Leslie, you <laughs> You have, um, I, I guess you've been compared to Peggy Lee in your singing quality, yes, which sometimes. is what a compliment. They're quite a compliment. Mm -hmm. And how did you get involved? And yet in? I don't think I'm like her at all. It's <laughs> <laughs> still quite a compliment. Uh, but how did you get involved in the showbiz? Well, I just I was a singer when I was in my early 20s, and then I raised a family and went into business and bought and sold businesses and real estate and when I was nearing 40, yes. I said, <laughs> so this is hope for everyone, you know, life begins at 40. So then I thought, you know, I think I'm going to uh, go back to school. I majored in music. I put a big band together in Portland, Oregon. I did all of the society parties and played for the President of the United States twice on his visits. and. Then in 1992, I moved to 
Las Vegas. My youngest daughter was 17, and I said, stay home, take care of the house, the rent's paid, I'll be home in six weeks. And uh, went to Las Vegas, and within three or four days, I was hired, well, at the Desert Inn, almost. <laughs> and I met Bud in that period of time, and that's it. And well, tell the story about the Desert Inn, because before we went on air, well, you talked about it. I think it's just darling. Well, you well, know, you part you, of my spiritual, it's part of my spiritual, my whole spiritual belief about, uh, you know, I think that if you want something, you show, you give something. That's right. You give something without being concerned about what you're getting back in return. Mm -hmm. And uh, Burton Cohen, uh, I auditioned for Burton Cohen at the Desert Inn, and he liked me, and he wanted me to work in the lounge, but this was August uh, when I arrived in town, and he didn't want to start paying me until September, uh, because that's when business was going to pick up at the DI and everything. And so between August, uh, August 10th, when I arrived in town, and Labor Day weekend, I came in and worked for him every day, which he loved. He never had to pay me. Right. <laughs> and at the end of the month, by then, you know, everyone was saying, well, you are going to hire her now. Well, he did, and I worked for him for years after that. And then we met, and um, I, was, I was working in the lounge. Buddy was headlining at the Desert Inn, and uh, we were all very respectful to Mr. Greco. <laughs> we're, we're, we miss your do. You, do. But, how long have you two been married? We're together now almost. Uh, well, ladies. 10 years. We've been ten. married seven years, seven years, I think, mm -hmm. probably. Do you still call him Mr. Greco? Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Because, no. okay. <laughs> I do. But he tells a cute joke, and the, the, you know, then we started going out, and I started calling him Buddy. Right, and now she calls me her conductor. So that's her <laughs> piano player. <laughs> That's right. That's good because so, you are conducting. I've got her. the best right. too. Yes, yeah. I have the best, and he got what he deserved—a girl singer. <laughs> Musicians will understand <laughs> the irony. Means, right? Musicians will understand. <laughs> How cute. Well, we're going to talk more about your career, Leslie. We'll come back from the break, but buddy, you have as we talked about, you have sixty-six uh, albums. I now have sixty-six S albums. Sixty-six yeah. albums. How did the first be? Well, you, you okay. The, the song that you had that was the million and a half. Singer. She pretty. That was the first one. Okay, was that a single song? That, those were the days of '78. You're too young to remember. Oh, 78s. I know what '78. Those are, are '78. And then, so when did you produce your first album? Uh, uh my goodness, I think I did my first album. An LP uh, album. What people don't LP, even know what LPs I, are anymore, do they? I think probably. Was that Mr. Kelly? Uh, probably. Mr. Kelly's that I did in 1955, which is one, and I didn't do one, another one for maybe 15 years or so. But because of the nature of the business and, and the kind of stuff that I am as a jazz piano player singer, I knew uh, which, where I wanted to go, and I was really getting tired of doing songs that I really didn't want to do. You know, so I figured, well, I'm going to produce my own stuff and then see what happens. So it's been, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I think it's been pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's been pretty good. If you've only produced one album uh, and then waited 15 years to produce more, you have been busy producing a lot of albums. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that was, yeah, that's like two a year or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. There was that's one amazing. period where I, I produced a lot. Uh, but that's what I did, you know, even before I had a lot of hit records. I produced albums, I wrote arrangements, um, you know, for, for Sinatra and Stephen E. and uh, Johnny Mathis and so on. But I am totally involved in this business. I think you are, because yeah. you're a very talented man. Thank you. But when we come back from the break, we'll talk more with Buddy Greco and Leslie Anders. I like that, L-E-Z. -L um, and going into the break, we have some of Buddy's music. So sit back and take a listen. We'll be right back with Talk Desert. Girl talk, girl talk. They all meow about the ups and downs of all the friends. You can always see something extraordinary that inspires you here. It captivates, thrills, and delights us. That's why the McCallum Theater is so special. Here you can see award-winning Broadway musicals and plays, sparkling performances by the biggest stars, and all the best from the world of music, dance, and comedy. So come, join us, right here at the McCallum Theater. The Desert Symphony has something for everyone this season. Live entertainment supported by your professional symphony orchestra creates great memories for the entire family. 
Experience the finest musicians performing the classics, popular songs from theater, and even more from motion pictures. For tickets and information, go to thedesertsymphony.org or call 760-340-ARTS or 760-773-5988. Back to Melinda and her special guest, Buddy Greco, and his wife, Leslie Anders. Well, we're back with the wonderful Buddy Greco and his beautiful wife, Leslie Anders. And uh, you were listening to Buddy at the break. That was wonderful music. Really appreciate the CDs that you've sent us. That was My just pleasure. wonderful. Thank you. Um, Okay, so yeah, you've done everything. You've arranged for everybody. You you play piano. You sing. What haven't you done in the business? Uh, learn how to be a good golfer. That's really what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my 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 whole what I'd like to do now seriously uh, is write for films. Uh, I like to score for movies now mm -hmm. because I I'm really involved writing again thanks to the Peggy Lee show because I've been writing quite a bit and that's really what I want to do now. So writing for films. Well, uh, well, that would be fabulous, but why haven't you done that yet? You've got to get out and get I don't that. Know. Huh? Nobody's wanted me so far. <laughs> oh, you just need to let them know that you uh, want I'm to be ready. there. Hey, you do it for free like Leslie did right, at the right. Desert Inn. I'll do it for free. Right? <laughs> I'm teasing. See, this is, that's, a sal that's, that's the sales gimmick I used on him to write the Peggy Lee show. Honey, you do it for free. Right. I pay you later. Right. <laughs> well, 20 arrangements I've never been paid. <laughs> In oh, my own way. But right. I think In she's taking good care of you, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the Peggy Lee show, Leslie, because as I said, a lot of people uh, think you sound like Peggy Thank Lee. You. So how did, how did this all evolve? Well, um, we were ready to record my second CD project, and looking for a theme of the right. CD, I had already been, uh, you know, been reviewed. Uh, with similarities to Peggy Lee and we thought this would be a real natural and I was already doing a lot of her material in my shows so what began, began as a CD project then became a live stage presentation a little more than cabaret a little theater uh, a lot of photographs of Peggy and really it became an educational uh, production more than anything else really because Peggy was oh, fabulous. Yes, and we lost her just a couple of months ago, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. We went to her we memorial to her service, memorial. and you know, the music business is changing so much, but to see in that room Johnny Mandel, Cy Coleman, Quincy Great. Jones, oh, yeah, just uh, just cream, just everyone the was there, mm -hmm. and it was really wonderful. A, a really wonderful service, and a lot of her great music, and it's got a great script. Uh, a friend of <coughs> Leslie's wrote the script for the, for the uh, show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robert Strom, the president of our uh, of the Peggy Lee fan club, wrote the script, and uh, we have pictures that have been donated from fans all over the world. And it's really, really wonderful. The show has 18 songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I perform probably three fourths of them. Buddy's doing several in the show and conducting the orchestra, and it's really. Uh, it's going to be fun. Free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you're, you're so mean to no, me. No, no, no. The show yeah. is right now mostly in Las Vegas, is that right? Or? Well, we're traveling. We're touring with the show. Okay. And uh, so right now, when we go back, we're doing uh, the show for the University of Nevada. Uh, there, there's a huge event at the Bellagio every year. Mm -hmm. And so we're performing the show really the first really the first time with our co-producers, the university, on April 6th. And we're booking the show now for touring. And that's why I'm thinking that we'll be here in the desert with us. With it. We were talking about it last night, and uh, one of the uh, producers, one of the buyers here, uh, was very interested. And I heard her saying to the agent, when you find out about this, let us know. We'd like to book them here, which is wonderful. So we're looking and forward to it. And we've been talking it. about the McCallum, the McCallum yeah, maybe yeah, next year, you know, right. I think. Okay. Well, you know, Leslie, I don't think a lot of people know that Peggy Lee wrote a lot of songs. Fabulous composer. I mean, not only did she record for five decades, I mean, from 1940 with Benny Goodman. And see, this, this ties in with Buddy. Benny was really instrumental in bringing Buddy to the attention of a national audience, and he did the same thing with Peggy Lee ten years earlier. So then when Peggy left Benny Goodman's band with her husband, Dave Barber, 
because they married, they met, he was the guitar player in the band. Uh, they started writing songs such as Mignana uh, in 1948, It's a Good Day, I Don't Know Enough About You, I mean, on and on and on. They, they, they were considered uh, the builders of the Capitol Records building in Hollywood because of all the hits that they had for Capitol. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I, had, I, had, I heard an interview on the internet with you, Leslie, uh, and you talked about something about that they built a vocal booth for oh, Peggy Lee. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. a fascinating story. Well, you know, uh, recording history, uh, when she recorded Lover uh, for Decca, she left to record that song. She used six percussionists and a huge orchestra. There were over 50 people in the orchestra. And the sound kept bleeding into the vocal mics. They had never used a vocal, an isolation booth for a vocalist. You sang with the band, didn't you? You sang with the band. You that sang live it. with the band. Yeah. <laughs> and so she was so distraught at the end of working all day. And they called her the next morning and said, please come back. Will you come back one more time? She came back. And they had constructed a vocal booth for her. And, and in fact, uh, the recording of Mignogna in 1948, she used Carmen Miranda's band, mm -hmm. and they had never done a fade out on a recording, and the band actually went out the doors of the studio and down, down Vine Street, Vine Street. <laughs> playing. But I mean, when they went out of the studio, that was the, you know, I'm sure they had a volume control, they yeah. could fade it out, but. So there, That's, there's some recording history. Really. There. And, buddy, before we went on air, we talked about that you were at a surprise birthday party for Frank Sinatra. Oh, yes. Would you share yeah. that story? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it was Frank's 75th or 76th birthday. It's quite some time ago. And I was appearing at Bally's in Atlantic City, and Frank was working at Bally's, and so was Sammy Davis, the, the guest. So we were working in two different rooms, and it was Frank's birthday in December. So Frank's manager came up to me and says, look, we've, we've constructed a, a wooden cake about five feet high. Would you get in it? And I said, of course I would. So I get in the cake, and I'm waiting in the wings, and uh, they're singing. Frank and Sammy are singing. All of a sudden, they're pushing me out in the cake, and, and Frank says, uh, Frankie Randall says, uh, uh, who's in the cake? And Frankie says, well, it's Buddy Greco, uh, and one of America's singer, piano players. I pop out of the cake, <laughs> and everybody starts singing Happy Birthday to Frank. And so I get out of the cake, and I go and I say, hi, Frank, and hi, Sammy, uh, Happy Birthday, Frank. And I said, Frank, you know, I've been in the business over 40-some years. I wanted to come out of the cake nude. <laughs> and Frank said, you wanted to come out nude? And I said, yeah. And Frank says, I've seen you nude. And Sammy Davis said, it's not a big deal. <laughs> and the place went nuts. <laughs> so we, Frank, as I was going off, Frank Sinatra said to me, well, I know you know this song, because we're doing Ladies of Tramp. And we close that whole thing with uh, doing uh, Ladies of Tramp, which is about a five minute uh, a tape. So it's on my new CD. It's a lot of fun. Tell us about the new CD that's coming up, because uh, you said this is a special at the very end, The Lady is a Tramp, with, right. with Frank and Sammy and you? Yes, mm -hmm. the, the new CD is a compilation album, for the people who don't know what that is, of course, you get a lot of songs from different albums, you, as you know, you put them all together, and I figure, how am I going to close this? Uh, it's a lot of vocal stuff, but some of the cuts on the album are really jazz musicians like Toots Thielman and Grover Washington, Terry Gibbs, Buddy DeFranco, an all-star band. So out of the 19 songs, I think maybe four or five uh, are from a previous album, which was a jazz album, and I figure, how am I going to close this? Because it's really a good album. And she came up with the idea and said, why don't you put the Sinatra thing as a, as a bonus track, which is what we've done. So that's the one that we're sending. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you both have new CDs out, or current CDs are yeah. here. Why don't you hold them up and oh, so yeah. the audience can see that. That's, Buddy, my, that's my lovely. It is. She, and she is lovely. <laughs> thank you. Yes, that's yes. me. Yes. <laughs> and that's my lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I had dark hair, by the way. <laughs> that's one of your lovelies. One, okay, thanks. One Verve, you know, Verve, yeah. Verve came out with a new album. You should tell the, album, yeah, yeah, the Verve came out with a brand new album, tell which is wonderful. That. Oh, sorry. Are you still doing that? <laughs> Do you want me to hold it still for you? Beautiful. Thank you. 
Did you get that? Get, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need every plug I he's, can get. He's got, most of my guests have a lot of ham in them, so <laughs> yeah, do I. No. <laughs> Where's yours? Show your album. Yeah, we're, no, I can't even. Come on, on, on key. We should so. have made him bring all of his. No, please. Oh, we yeah. Held up all of his. <laughs> have to roll it in on a dolly, huh? <laughs> with, over, with 66 albums. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyway, you, but you were in town for the Sinatra Golf Tournament, right. Celebrity Golf Invitational, Invitational Tournament, right. and he says, well, you've, been, you've played in it for 12 years? I've, I've been practically to all of them, and, and one of the joys uh, it was when Frank was alive that all of us used to get up on stage, and, and uh, that turned out to be an incredible, I had no idea it was going to be this big, I think none of us did. But it's such a joy to do it, and of course Barbara is an absolute sweetheart and a very dear friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward every year. We're going to come back and do it again, of course. Terrific, terrific. Now I understand you have an autobiography that you're working on. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been uh, very lucky in this business. I've been uh, at the right time, at the right place, and uh, somebody became very interested in my life story coming from Philadelphia and. Um, a couple of marriages that I've had and some of the a couple. Uh, <laughs> a couple of the problems that I had as a young man with my temper and everything. And because of my friendship with Frank and, and Marilyn Monroe and so on, they thought it would be a good idea uh, to uh, start a book. And all of a sudden, all these stories are coming out of me that's been happening, you know. And uh, it probably will be out in maybe less than a year. Okay. okay. I have a question. Leslie, what's your favorite song that Buddy sings? Oh, oh gosh, I have so many. Right okay. now I'm listening to the Italian album. So right now I'm listening to uh, My Last Night in Rome, and uh, I love everything on that album. And Buddy, what's the favorite song that Leslie sings? Well, again, you know, it sounds like a mutual admiration. She's, 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 she's <laughs> I would so, hope so. She's so good. I mean, everything. Uh, I love the oh, way so she's sweet. a great, great ballad singer, like Peggy was. and, and uh, uh, when she does, uh, who can I turn? Nothing. Who can? Uh, what's the one that we did last night? Where can da, I? Da, da, da. Where can I go without you? And when she yeah. does Fever, it just mesmerizes yeah, the whole place. So, Leslie, what's your favorite song to sing? Um, I think probably those ballads, the big ballads. Where can I go without you? Some of the things, uh, you know, and especially the things that Buddy has arranged for me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's probably my. So, Buddy, what's your favorite thing to do? Do you like to play? Do you like to arrange? Do you like to sing? Strange, or all of it. Strangely enough, go ahead, tell them. I love to do it all. My favorite thing oh. is playing golf. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just going to say the big G word. I, <laughs> golf. I'm a golf idiot. I would, quickly, in about, uh, well, we, we're out of time. Uh, I just got the, the signal. I'd like to thank Buddy Greco for being oh, my special you. guest and his beautiful wife, Leslie Anders, for being thank my special you, guest on Talk of the Desert. Melinda. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having us. And thank you, audience, for joining us. For more information, email TOTDTV at questoffice.net and visit talkofthedesert.tv on the web.